warm, warm welcome to everyone who is joining us today from all over the world in, in all different time zones. My name is Shivam Kishore, and I'm the Senior Advisor to the Digital Transformation at the United Nations Environment Program, and also a co-champion of the Coalition of Digital Environment and Sustainability, CODES. Um, just a quick reminder of uh, who we are. It's been a while since we've had a chance to connect. Uh, we're a global movement of over a thousand stakeholders with one core mission, and that is to drive a sustainability-driven digital transformation. Uh, we recognize that we live in a digitally connected world, and it is necessary to leverage this transformation to serve our social and planetary needs. We want to ensure that we create the right enabling environments that allows digital technologies to be leveraged in a way that is sustainable. We want to ensure that the infrastructure that the digital technologies depend upon is itself sustainable. So we don't create or don't worsen the problems of e-waste of digital devices. And we want to ensure that the digital innovations that we foster are fundamentally driven by sustainability-centered principles so as to support the advancement of environmental and social mandates. We launched our action plan, which is our framework to advance these shifts uh, alongside very tangible, actionable impact initiatives last year at Stockholm Plus 50. Uh, for those of you who had the opportunity to join us, there was a very exciting uh, event and a very wonderful way of getting the community engaged. And uh, it's been a long time since, and we're very excited to share some amazing updates with you in what we've been up to over the last many months, uh, some really exciting progress we have made on the different initiatives, and more importantly, some very exciting updates on from a front-end standpoint on our websites um, and our other marketing material. Now, we recognize that uh, all of us, I can attest at the Code Score Champion Groups that we would love to engage with you more often, but this is a commitment going forward that we will certainly try our very best to have these touch points uh, more often than we have had in the past. Um, we've been working away in the background uh, to enable these different advancements. And so apologies if we could not connect as much as we would have liked to, but certainly a commitment to do more going forward. I'm seeing a lot of exciting introductions come in. Wonderful. Thank you all for joining again. It's a pleasure to have you all here. So as a first uh, start to the evening, I would, I'm excited, I would say, and very, very appreciative um, of the co-champion group to put together uh, introduction welcome video and this video is 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 made to serve as an invitation it's meant to serve as an invitation to the individuals across the world to help them better engage with codes and to also share in a very intimate way what the purpose of codes is so it's my great pleasure to share with you a very quick video on codes what we are who we are and what we are planning to do the Can the digital age support a more sustainable planet? Every day we use digital technologies, often without thinking about the impact of digital inequality, or the environmental cost of digital systems. But what if we work together to empower each other and set global standards for digital sustainability? We can bridge the digital divide. We can use digital technology to monitor and preserve our natural resources, to increase food security, to make cities and communities sustainable, inclusive, resilient, and safe. This is the vision of CODE's Coalition for Digital Environmental Sustainability. Created by a global alliance, CODE's is now a global movement. More than 1,000 people join forces to develop an action plan for a sustainable planet in the digital age. This action plan calls for three key shifts so we can have a sustainable future. Shift one, rethink digitalization to align with sustainable development. Shift two, reduce the negative impacts of the digital age. Shift three, accelerate digital innovations for sustainability. The digital age can be a positive force for the world, but we need you. 
Everyone has a role to play. Start the digital sustainability conversation today. Join codes. Gets me excited every time. I've watched it over five times now because it does take a lot of time to build a video. And then I know it's less than a minute, but I get excited every time I watch it. So I'm sorry if you're seeing a big smile on my face. I generally smile a lot, but this video definitely makes me smile a bit more. Um, so this is this is this is something very and, and I want to sort of as we progress through the next hour and a half, I do want to really emphasize that this is an engagement. We're very keen to have you all with us. And while we are trying to share really exciting updates with you. The session is a lot more live if we can have an engagement. So please, if you've got any questions along the way, if you've got any comments along the way, if you've got any suggestions along the way, please put them in the chat window and we will try and surface them through the conversation. We've got multiple engagement touch points through Mentimeter and so on, where we will have a bit more intimate engagement. But throughout the undertaking, please share your comments and suggestions with us so we can try and bring them up. Um, next up, I've got another very exciting update after the video. Um, I would like to welcome Paulina, my dear colleague Paulina, to share an update on the websites. In the background, we've been working on launching a new code website. And uh, that's going to be a lot more interactive, a lot more um, 2023-esque. Um, and so it, it's, it's my deep excitement to welcome Paulina, and, and she'll be happy to share with you. Paulina, please, can I welcome you? Thank you, Shivam. Uh, hi, everyone. I will share my screen and uh, update you on exciting uh, new website journey. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, perfect. So my name is Paulina Karoleva. I'm a part of uh, UNAP Digital Transformation Team and also Codes. And um, I'm going to present you the work we've been doing in, in the last few months in developing a new website for codes that will be launched in a few weeks and maybe you've noticed uh, at the last uh, shot of the video uh, that uh, there is this new uh, link uh, to codes.global that's where um, the website will be located so um, the main goal for us uh, and the main website objectives were to position codes as the leading global resource for knowledge and capacity building around sustainable digital transformation, and also, of course, drive grow, growth and activity uh, and activate um, global uh, codes members. And I will walk step by step um, and show you the design of the website and uh, new features and uh, all the all the different opportunities how um, you could engage with codes better. Uh, engage with other members uh, and find the uh, resources in an easier way and also uh, be able to take action and uh, uh, lead one of the in impact initiatives. So this is the landing page um, of the website. Um, and I will zoom in a little bit. Uh, so in the very top, you can see uh, there are three shifts the top bar, uh, we, we, we want to present the framework that um, code, the, the framework of codes, three core shifts, also uh, impact initiatives and the way to engage with them, learning resources and who we are as a community. And if we walk down the first, uh, first page, uh, we will see these three, three shifts. Uh, an opportunity to learn more in the action plan, our main document uh, that will be available in both PDF and HTML. We were trying to make the website as accessible uh, as possible for those who don't maybe have a stable connection. And yeah, this is the this is the first page. Uh, now we are moving on to the three shifts. This. Uh, page will basically present the framework, uh, what are the three focus areas we are working on and what, um, what ideas uh, codes, codes has to offer. Um, the, it will serve as a summary of, a, of the action plan uh, where you could learn about each shift 
uh, step by step. And the most exciting part is uh, the cause initiatives and call to action. Uh, here we will have an overview of all the nine impact initiatives that we have, and hopefully in the future we'll have even more with all the le leading uh, organizations who will take uh, leadership in taking these impact initiatives forward. As of now, we have logos as a as example as an example, but hopefully with time, we will add uh, logos of your organization as well as uh, organizations that will take a lead of one of the impact initiatives. Yeah, in each of uh, impact initiative, we'll have some background information, the timeline, and also, as I said, the, uh, the list of those who lead this initiative and also opportunity to join. Um, in different roles, either as a co-leader or just join the, the work as an uh, aligned organization. <laughs> this, this is some interactive <laughs> moment. I just, I just uh, got in, uh, it's a uh, Lucas said very 2023 esque website indeed. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> I do think there's one thing in 2023 that we cannot have a clunky website. And I'm so glad that this is not a clunky website. So yeah, excellent job by the team. Thank you all, Paulina, please go on. Yeah, and we, we just realized that we have a lot of resources and things to share and events and our current website cannot handle the, all of this information. So um, hopefully now it will be a lot easier to navigate. Uh, this is a Get Involved page that will contain two parts, learning part uh, and leading part, because we want to have um, this website to serve both individuals who just want to educate themselves about digital sustainability, but also organizations who want to take action. So these two pathways shall be very clear from, from the website, and we will put some uh, key event over there and announce the future events. We'll uh, share some recording from uh, digital discovery sessions we had in the, in the past. And also we will invite, and we do invite you already to get on board and lead uh, some of the impact initiatives. And yes, and the last page we'll just uh, uh, talk about our journey and our team. Um, you can see how it will look like and getting to the point of this get involved um, action call to action uh, we came up with the framework of three different pathways uh, for both individuals and organizations and uh, you would be able to fill out a form and based on the your organization's interests uh, point what level of engagement you'd like to have with codes, either lead, align, or advocate if you are um, an individual. You can already um, use this QR code that leads you to this form. It's on, it's open, um, and we invite you to fill it out. But to give you an overview of these different engagement pathways, here is a graph. So for all the individuals who just like to learn more, participate in conversations and be part of the community, we have an advocate uh, pathway that includes being subscribed to the month monthly newsletter, um, be able to participate in expert, uh, to contribute uh, with your expertise. Uh, but more, maybe more interesting for for you would be the participation as an organization where one could take a lead uh, to one of the impact initiatives and have all these great bonuses that you can see uh, in the right column or align uh, with one of the impact initiatives or several impact initiatives, which would uh, require maybe less, uh, it will be less time con consuming, but still will give you an opportunity to shape the impact initiatives uh, and cont contribute as an expert. So it is all from me. Paulina. Thank you very much. Yes. This is excellent. We've got a couple of people in the chat who 
want, would like to scan the QR code, could you maybe perhaps go back to the QR code uh, sure. slideshow so they can interact? And also for the for the team here, we will share uh, sort of the engagement pathways as a document with you that will allow you to asynchronously also join in and, and sort of go through the process. But but here's the QR code slide. Thank you, Paulina. Mm -hmm. I think while people are doing this, I just saw a, a comment in the chat window talking about uh, how excellent the colors are. And I think we can all uh, sort of agree that I think we've got my dear colleague Marcel to severely thank for it. I think Marcel put his foot down and basically said, no, nope, this this, we're going to have some nice, lovely colors on the website that everybody can get beyond. And so a deep thanks uh, to Marcel for getting the Yeah, thank Marcel. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and the idea, idea was to to make website give give this positive, optimistic vibe that uh, this transformation is for the better, and um, this uh, col color choice reflects that uh, wish. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And Paulina, maybe you can give a shout out to the website development team that uh, was behind this. Absolutely. Of course, yeah. Like old purpose, amazing team that uh, was developing this throughout the last months and now the final steps. Um, yeah, amazing, great team to recommend. And they will also uh, be involved in one of the impact initiatives, which is amazing. There's a lot of questions uh, to the link to the site. As much as we would like to share the link with you, the website's not currently live. We'll need to have a bit more patience till it becomes live. So, Paulina, could you maybe share about when we are hoping to get the website live and when we will share that with the wider team? Yes, we are hoping to have it out in the mid mid March, uh, towards the end of uh, March, latest. And it uh, we definitely will announce it on Spark Blue through through newsletters and through every possible channel we have. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned in uh, two three weeks it will be out. Amazing. I think we've got a bunch of people who want to bite the test. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we will certainly welcome and invite individuals. I think we'll just have a bit of a plan sorted out over the next few weeks on the launch process and what the beta testing will look like. So absolutely for individuals who are so keen as to support us in that, uh, we will really welcome and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Paulina or the website, uh, please put it in the window and we can certainly um, get back to it. But Paulina, I think this is it for the website, I believe. Thank you so much. That was Thank excellent. You. Really a lot of hard work. So again, a, a big kudos to the team for pulling this off. It does take quite a bit of effort um, and collective intelligence to put things together, especially when it comes to subjective undertakings. Um, we've got a question from Monica saying, could you sign to an engagement pathway now and then months later change to another pathway? Yes. Um, so absolutely. Uh, the pathways are designed to be agile and fluid. So there's an opportunity where at the current moment in time, there is a sentiment to engage with a particular pathway, please uh, fill it out and, and we can engage with you in that capacity. And then if the capacity shifts and changes over the next many months, and there's appetite to engage in a bit more deeper intimate manner, and we can certainly invite that as well. So it's absolutely uh, meant to be um, the case. Excellent. Thank you, Paulina, very much. Moving on from the website, uh, we've got uh, a very sort of important, I would say, a very important um, initiative that uh, we've been working on, which is called the Global Digital Compact. Uh, it's under the UN Secretary General's roadmap. And uh, to speak a bit more about the GDC and its relationship to codes and what it means for all of us and for the wider tech community, um, I would invite uh, Marcel, please, if you could come on. Hi there. Yeah, thanks a lot, Shivam. And uh, it's really great and a pleasure that so many of you are joining us today, even on short notice. And I will have a brief input, a couple of slides, uh, four, four slides um, on the Global Digital Compact, um, the process itself, just that everyone is on the same page here. And uh, uh, also briefly on our code submission that we prepared and want to hand in. And this also, like the, the main message here is a call for action. 
Okay, the first slide. This is just to give you a brief context who's not aware of the whole process and the background of the Global Digital Compact. Uh, so uh, we had the Our Common Agenda process, um, reform process, if you will, uh, of the uh, UN uh, with the goal to reinvigorate multilateralism, make it more effective in addressing current challenges and, of course, turbocharge the SDG implementation. As most of you are aware, we are in the decade of action for the 2030 agenda, very important years. And uh, in this context, uh, the Summit of the Future was announced initially for this year, um, but after yeah, some requests to shift it uh, because of the overload, um, the Summit of the Future now takes place next year in 2024 on the 22nd and 23rd of September next year. Um, Summit of the Future Multilateral Solutions for a Better Tomorrow. And um, here also a pact of the future will be negotiated and, um, and, and adopted, so to say. Uh, this process is co-facilitated, co-chaired by Germany and Namibia. Uh, so the permanent representatives in, in New York at the United Nations uh, co-chair this process. And there are many other uh, different uh, sub-processes, if you will, uh, under the summit of the future process uh, in the year to come. And one of them, um, is the Global Digital Compact. This is, of course, especially important uh, for us and our purpose, as it is the main window of opportunity for political action at the global and international level uh, in, in, in the years to come. And um, the Global Digital Compact process uh, more or less started last year, but really um, gained momentum beginning of this year when consultations started uh, among member states, but also among different other stakeholder groups already in January. And, and February and will continue. Mm, important to know is that uh, the whole process of the Global Digital Compact is co-chaired by Sweden and Rwanda. Um, and the official pen holder in the UN language is um, the tech envoy. So the tech envoy and his office will um, assist and, and, and co-lead, so to say, the development of the brief of uh, the first initial sketch of the Global Digital Compact then. Um, and um, Currently, submissions are still accepted, written ex uh, submissions, and um, the tech envoy is mainly uh, calling for different ideas on core principles. This is one key category, and key commitments, pledges, and actions. Next slide, please. And I, th I think this is really key. Uh, so you uh, might want to use this uh, slide also for promotional purposes and to make other people aware that cannot uh, be here today. Uh, this is an overview a timeline um, of the engagement process. So the submission process of the Tech Envoy Office um, with written uh, submissions is, is open until end of March. So a couple of weeks to go. Uh, the UN consultations uh, that you can also register for and participate uh, are still ongoing until mid June this year. And one really important date you should note uh, was announced last uh, week that different deep dives and on the 14th of June, there will be a whole day with consultations on uh, SDG implementation uh, in the context of the Global Digital Compact. Uh, so this year in September, there will be a ministerial meeting where the issue paper, the first draft, so to say, uh, will be presented and discussed uh, among ministers. And then uh, the intergovernmental negotiation process will start. And the final Global Digital Compact text will be developed and negotiated. And here, I think uh, for an open stakeholder group like ours, I think it's also important to highlight uh, that this timeline and this process can also be a, catal a, a, a catalyzer for, for the development of own priorities in, in, in national contexts, for example, right? Many ministries, many stakeholder groups start to engage in these global processes and have to develop a position, an opinion, uh, sort out their interests, so to say. So. Um, when we go to the next slide, I just highlighted uh, some different uh, asks, so to say, uh, to you, to our community, to us. Uh, please uh, submit for the Global Digital Compact. As I said, uh, uh, possible until end of March. Uh, you have to submit a couple of key principles uh, and a couple of key actions that support these principles. Uh, this is only a, a maximum of 2,500 characters, so it's not a lot of text. Uh, you have to be precise and condensed. And uh, of course, we ask you to align your submission to codes and our submission uh, as, a, as a community. 
Um, I will present a couple of perspectives in a minute on our on a code submission. Second, uh, participate in the consultations itself. I mean, this is quite a task. Uh, you most often only have two or three minutes to make a statement. And there are like hundreds of statements, of course, on, on, on such a day. But as I said last week, the seven deep dives uh, were announced. Uh, here you see them. I listed all of them on digital inclusion, internet governance, data protection, human rights, digital trust and security, AI and other emerging technologies, the global digital commons. And last not least, a uh, dedicated day uh, of consultations on accelerating progress of the SDGs. I think this is maybe the most important one to engage for us as a community. But of course, I mean, uh, all other topics here are, are relevant and have uh, deep connections to our uh, issues and interests as well. Uh, please be aware that you have to register for these events and I included the link here. It would be great if you can align uh, also uh, to you to codes in your in your statement and of course overall strength and sustainability and specific proposals within uh, the consultation processes. Last not least, I mean, uh, as I uh, said uh, already regarding the national and specific national contexts you're in and work uh, for, uh, it could be useful to engage here as well in national processes uh, towards the compact. Uh, there are different roundtables, consultations, policy processes that could be relevant here. Uh, next and final slide. Um, these four categories uh, headlines here are uh, mirroring more or less the submission uh, of the Tech Envoy Bureau open until end of March, as I said. Um, you can yeah, say a little bit about the process of preparation of your submission, then you have to add core principles, then key commitments, pledges and actions that support these principles. And finally, you can um, in, insert a couple of comments on the Global Digital Compact process itself. And uh, this is more or less uh, what, what, what we have prepared and want to submit after, after today's session, after your uh, feedback, after our discussions today. Uh, first, of course, we set a strong reference to our mandate, our strong mandate uh, to be part of the um, um, roadmap on digital cooperation process by the Tech Envoy. Uh, we, of course, uh, insert a strong reference to the global community and we strictly decided to base our submission on the um on the codes action plan itself i mean this is our main resource uh, this is our product we co-developed with all of you guys and uh, this gives us uh, the legitimacy also to uh, to to make a strong submission here uh, we then uh, developed the uh, codes three shifts logic so the three main points to align and enable both transformations uh, to mitigate the negative impacts to create really a sustainable digitalization and uh, last not least, to uh, innovate with purpose, so to use digital socio-technical innovations uh, purposeful towards our sustainability agenda. We uh, use these three main messages uh, to create our core principles, uh, to formulate them. I think this is clear. Yeah, this is um, our key narrative. And, and we use this from the action plan. For the key commitments, pledges, and actions uh, that can support uh, this, we uh, currently decided and uh, provide a text uh, based on the Code's impact initiatives, because in the logic of the action plan, these are the most relevant transformative action levers we identify together as a community and group. Um, there is also, of course, um, the option to more strongly refer to the strategic priorities um, that we developed in the action plan under each shift. And I think Shivam will share a question on that in the mentee in a minute. If you have a strong opinion, please share and give feedback. Uh, last but not least, uh, in the comment section, we highlight and urge you to highlight as well that the overall purpose of the Global Digital Compact should really be strongly uh, aligned to support the 2030 Agenda and its SDGs uh, overarching. And uh, secondly, that it's really important to have a dedicated space, a chapter, a focus uh, area on sustainability, on sustainable digitalization. Um, derived from the process uh, before, there is currently no thematic area in the submission scheme itself uh, dedicated to sustainability. So you have to submit your submission under us other. Uh, this is a bit tricky and we really want to overcome this path dependency, which is quite a burden uh, and, and, and really safeguard that there is a dedicated chapter or space on, on sustainability matters and specific action uh, for, the, for the global community uh, in, the, in the compact in the end. With this, I give 
Um, give it back to you, Sibam, I guess. Marcel, thank you. We've got a couple of questions in the chat, and I think there's a couple of exciting dialogues that we can come come about through the conversations at the moment. So first is, yes, we will send the slides, all that we're presenting today. Uh, we will share that with the wider team, so you will all have access uh, to it. There's some uh, chatter about whether or not the process has been pushed back, the GDC process has been pushed back a bit uh, because of the political implications. Um, I do believe it has, yes, but I think for us, we continue to go with the mindset that it is important for us to engage in the current capacity and really ensure that sustainability gets, gets front and center into the entry points um, of this process. Um, I think, Marcel, I was thinking one thing while you were talking about, and, and would it also be better for us, you think, to share with the wider team sort of our core submission, maybe as a framework that everybody else can also then use to inform their submissions? Because if we are basing it based on the closed action plan, what would be your thoughts about sharing like a rough high level framework that the wider team, the codes community could use perhaps as a submission point, or you think not really, just wanted to invite your quick sort of thoughts on, on whether that might be useful. And maybe from everybody else on the call as well, if it if it does help, um, you know. Yeah, I wasn't able to read all the comments now, uh, but the pushback, yes, I mean, it got uh, uh, pushed back uh, one year and also the submission deadline got uh, shifted a couple of times. Uh, this is the final deadline as far as I know, and I'm pretty sure. Um, because now the whole consultation and submission process started and it will, uh, from my perspective, definitely end end of March. We are, of course, also uh, with our different national uh, partners speaking about how to keep the transparency high, even in the year process of the inter inter intergovernmental negotiations. And I think there will still be some decisions to be made, how inclusive and transparent and multi-stakeholder based this process uh, then still will be or can be or if it only will be intergovernmental. Um, regarding uh, our code submission, I mean, we strictly uh, more or less uh, aligned the submission or developed the, the submission. I mean, Shivam, you know it yourself. Uh, we co-developed it in the end um, to, the, to the language of the action plan. Uh, we can think about a process to share it with the community again, um, if it's finalized next week or so. Um, I think the main message here is really that you should submit something on your own as well. Yes, it might help and it's good if you align yourself to the codes network and the overall purpose and some of the key messages. I think this would be appreciated because uh, yeah, there are not so many. So it's, it's not given yet, I would say, <laughs> that uh, the different messages from, from codes in our community uh, will be included. And of course, I mean, good ideas are also uh, wanted right so if you have good proposals for specific actions uh, that could appear in such an intergovernmental document in the end and could make sense i think give it a try yeah give it a shot <laughs> um we deliberately decided that we don't just want to replicate one specific submission again and again um i think it's it's more important that many different actors uh, somehow align under a common umbrella and give, of course, yeah, some key recommendations in this regard. So, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's perhaps a good consideration to use code's framework as an overarching inspiration to drive forward some of the narratives, um, but each with their own unique touches so that it still comes across as different submissions. Um, I think Lucas also on the chat pointed out the importance of submissions because at the moment it appears that there are not very many submissions that are focusing on digital sustainability. Um, and so it is quite imperative, given that all of us are deeply passionate and caring about shifting the role of digital tech in the world today, I think it's important and imperative that we undertake this very important um, process um, and go and submit our, our submissions. I think we will, we will have an internal chat and see if there's a possibility for us to share what we are doing on our part, just as a Inspiration framework, if it helps, uh, we'll certainly do that. And, and if we can, we will absolutely share that as well. Um, brilliant. I and think in the consultation so, so far, I mean, uh, also a couple of member states uh, actors highlighted uh, the importance of the 2030 agenda as such and the SDGs, but this really needs more flesh in the end. It needs to be uh, precise. They want really action-oriented points in the end. 
And so, so a sheer reference to the 2030 agenda in the beginning of the compact is not enough. It really needs to be, yeah, include some specific actions and ideas here. As well, I'm also seeing in the chat windows where people are, certain groups are undertaking submissions and they're inviting others to join them as well. I think that's a fantastic way as well, where if we can sort of, again, join hands in, in each other's submissions and add and contribute and get inspired. I think that's a brilliant way as well. I certainly encourage everyone to also co-inspire each other and co-submit with each other. I think that's a great way to do it also. Um, I just also got informed that uh, we have the powers now to get people to speak. Um, so if anybody has any questions and they would like to speak, please raise your hands and then I can sort of bring you on and we can engage in a conversation that way as well. Um, Marcel, this has been excellent. Thank you. As the next part of the session, I'm sure I'll bring you back in again, but as the next part, we've prepared a few Mentimeter questions to just have a bit more of an engagement and understand the sentiment around the GDC process. So bear with me as I share with you the Mentimeter link um, and also my screen that will help us understand the engagement process a bit better. So just give me one second here as I share my screen. And in the meanwhile, I'll also post the link to the Mentimeter. Now, I will also in a moment share the QR code and, and the website as well. But this is for all who have access to machine, a computer, a PC, they would like to access it that way. And you see my screen, Marcel? Excellent. So if people can yes, please uh, pull out their trusted uh, cell phones, or if you can open up new tabs on your PC and, and join the link uh, for engagement, I'll probably give like 20 seconds or so for all of you to get, get yourself sorted here, and then we can go on to the questions. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up here. That's excellent. Does that mean that people are in the in the Mentimeter, I'm guessing that's what it is. Brilliant, all right. So I've got about 15, 18 thumbs up now, and we've got about 70, 80 participants. So for those of you who are still not using your websites, please go on, <laughs> like, it's great. It'll be good to engage with everybody. So I think we can get a good sense of where we are and what we need to do. So I do encourage more people to, to join. A few seconds. I feel like every time I think I should click the next button, I see the number go up, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should wait just a little bit longer so we can have a lot of people in. <laughs> 41, 42, my goodness. Okay, I think we'll keep waiting <laughs> till we hit, I think, till we hit a sweet spot of 70. Okay, I think we've got please uh, let people know in the chat window if you've got any troubles joining or if there's something that is not permitting you to join or any other technicalities, please let us know so we can sort of if there's something on that we can do on our end. I think we've got a good number of participants now, so let me just quickly go to the question. So here's the first question. And the sentiment here really that we are trying to gauge from you all is, do you think it is a wise idea on our part to use the framework as a core inspiration, um, the code action plan? Um, and there's multiple options that we would love your insights on. So. It is exciting to watch this move real time. So you're like, oh, which one's going to win? Ooh. 
where's David? He was always live commenting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this is definitely exciting. I mean, it's always fun to see the shifts. Um, but it looks like, do we agree that code's input to the GDC should closely mirror the action plan is coming out to be afraid. Marcel, any reactions from you because you've been so close to the GDC process? Any quick reactions from you when you see this result come out? Any any sort of thoughts that come up? Yeah, I mean, this more or less mirrors, of course. I mean, what we discussed before, I think just for our legitimacy, our uh, common codes community submission, of course, should be closely linked to the action plan as a key document, a key resource of our work uh, with a key narrative, key action areas. These strategic areas are, of course, valuable. I mean, they have um, uh, important and relevant uh, uh, thematic uh, areas where we need a strategic engagement. I mean, as I laid, uh, laid out, we uh, in the writing team now decided to more lean uh, towards the initiatives. Uh, I mean, this is also uh, a bit uh, difficult because, of course, we as a community want to implement those initiatives. But nevertheless, we had an agreement that we need strong member state engagement and support uh, of the yeah governmental global community for all of those and um, they are not done tomorrow or so so um, for us it was clear to somehow include uh, the different strategic levels we identified with the impact initiatives in the submission as well and uh, yeah i mean I personally, as I said, I strongly support uh, that other codes members or all community members should send on submissions uh, to really highlight the need to uh, to include a broad sustainability perspective here uh, to make the purpose right. clear. I think this is right. really important and we have a great community uh, with, of course, also great ideas beyond the action plan. So don't be shy, just um, do, do your submissions. <laughs> This is great. This is also promising because I would be really concerned if we had uh, some severe things on the left. But this is great. This seems like I think it's validating a lot of what we've been thinking about and the way we've been wanting to go about it. So, so this is great. Thank you again. The next question we had was, and again, we want you to sort of just highlight any words, keywords, key thoughts that come to your mind. So we can sort of start to understand if there are any, any sentiments that resonate more strongly, less strongly, if there are things that we need to be paying more close attention to. Innovation, yeah, that's, <laughs> that would have been my first one as well. Inclusion comes out again and again. Yeah, that's a very important one. Absolutely. Absolutely. SDGs, back measurements. Innovation, certainly future proofing. I think this is this is really nice because again this sort of helps me feel a bit more peaceful about the direction that we've been undertaking through codes through the action plan because a lot of these sentiments are interweaved into not just the submission to the global digital compact but also within the action plan itself. Um, for those of you who have had a chance to go to the action plan, you'll see a lot of these sentiments interweaved quite wonderfully into the action plan. Um, one interesting uh, sort of Things that are standing out to me is this particular one: anti-extractiveness, false solutions, rice space sovereignty. Um, I'm not sure. Sort of, maybe if somebody in the chat window can just quickly give us a little bit of a blurb on what 
that sentiment is. That's a that's a that's that's a new one that stands out to me. Uh, that I'm not sure exactly if I fully am able to grasp what the sentiment there is, but that would be helpful. Um, everything else seems fairly in sync, which is excellent. It's an interesting list. I mean, also from our key mandate in the beginning, we had this. Uh, for sustainability scientists, a bit, little bit strange focus on environmental sustainability specifically. I mean, in the action plan, we decided also after many discussions with the community to not uh, just cut the rest off and 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 deliberately are talking and including a broad sustainability perspective in the action plan itself. And this is always a, a difficult task, so to say, but I think this is mirrors quite well the right. uh, the broad approach we're taking. This is great. Yeah. This is extremely helpful. I think, again, we will share these after so that we all have this as a collective understanding to take away. So we can get again inspired if we're doing the submissions and also to keep each other uh, in sync and in check. This is excellent. These are the two questions we had. We had a bunch more questions, but I feel like the interest of time, I think we'll come back to those questions later. One quick thing I just wanted to ask everybody is, as I sort of shop, stop sharing my screen. Is, is, is sort of the ask on everybody, ask from everybody on what we're expecting or what we are hoping your engagement could be with the Global Digital Compact process clear enough? Um, because we've got Marcelia who's been deeply intimate. So if there's any questions, we can help you navigate uh, the process a bit better. So if there's any questions, any sort of sentiments that are unclear, that you're not sure on what is asked, what we could do, what we should do, please, I mean, I would, I would like to spend maybe a couple of minutes here. If there's any questions, comments, please share them now. Uh, hands, comments, whatever works. But I just want to make sure that we all collectively are fairly in sync as to what is needed to advance the Global Digital Compact and our role within it, with the focus on, again, putting in sustainability center and peace in this process. So any, any questions, comments, and clarities, uh, please? We'll Shabim, open. maybe I could just make a quick comment. Yeah. I think what, what's fundamentally needed is uh, member states have to start getting vocal about, about the sustainability agenda in the digital compact process. From what I have seen and observed, they're not yet systematically putting this on the table and, and putting forward proposals around sustainability. So I think the key ask, I mean, the first key ask is engaging in the digital compact process. But the second ask is then if you're in a country and you are connected to uh, your member state negotiating entity, please start to advocate for sustainability in the national agenda, in the national agenda that's taken forward into the digital compact process. I think that's equally important. So. From my side, there's kind of two ways to take this forward. There's the global link process and then there's the national one. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you, David. Um, one very good question, actually. There's a question from Luke is saying, would you recommend making submissions individually or as organizations? Marcel, any thoughts from you? I'd say, I would say both are equally important depending on the yeah. role, but Marcel, any, any quick sort of sentiments from you? I mean, both is possible. Uh, from the form itself, I mean, it's a really simple form, submission form, it's not much. Uh, and of course, I mean, they, they register like different categories of where you're from, where you're based, uh, they have a, a regional focus or global focus, etc. So they ask a couple of questions, who you are. Um, but both are important, I think, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and David's point, I just can mirror that again. I mean, I said it in my presentation, the third point, engagement in national processes is really key, especially as it's uh, now not clear yet uh, on, on how, how the process will continue after September this year. Sure, if sure, it's sure. only in intergovernmental uh, negotiations or more sure. open. David, uh, there's a couple of questions, which is a very interesting one. Like, is, is there a way for the team to find national contacts that they can approach or send content to in terms of the submissions uh, when it comes to national engagement? Is there any 
sort of. I mean, this is different um, yeah. from a couple of examples we had, or in Germany, for example. I mean, of course, you have to find out which ministry is working on it, which uh, where's the responsibility for the summit of the future process itself, and then most often uh, the responsibility for the global digital compact lies somewhere in the ministry with digital competencies or ICT competencies. Uh, so it really depends, of course, on the national setting. Um, but there is no sort of a uh, repository or anything with contact listed that it's, 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 it's it is. I would love to have that. I don't know. Yeah. About that <laughs> yeah. So at the moment, it's a Googling task. A trusted friend, Google will have to get us sorted on this one, but, but at least hopefully we can, we can give some directionality. At least what Marcel said gives us some directionality on how to and what to look for at least, which David, any comments from you? And each of the, each. Each of the submissions uh, that is made is is posted to the website and and they're available immediately. So you can also go through those submissions and and see who's saying what and which where the focal points are that are submitting material. So that's a second option. But as you just said, there is no global list of all ICT focal points or all focal points the, the process you can access. It's very much on a country by country basis. Brilliant. All right, I think just in the interest of time, I'll keep the conversation going. Thank you so much, Marcel, and thank you all for your engagement. Like I said, we are, our doors are always open. So if you've got questions or comments and concerns, send them to us and we'll definitely try our best to address them and, and get in touch. Um, moving on to the next part, we've been talking about the impact initiatives quite a lot because they form the premise or the baseline of our action plan um, as very tangible, actionable undertakings that we can collectively do to progress sustainability-driven digital transformation. To share a bit more about that and what we've been thinking, doing, we welcome Mega. Mega, thank you so much. Thanks, Shivam. Um, so I'm going to go back a little bit into code speak. Um, this is for those of you who've been with us for a while. This is to give you an update of what we've been up to, apart from what Polina and Marcel have been talking about, uh, to really bring you into you know, the like a duck paddling under the water, what's really going on under the covers, but also for those of you who are, who are new, who've been joining us, uh, either, either are joining us for the first time or the first few times to try and make sure that you can catch up with uh, who we really are and what why we speak about reaching up and reaching out. The idea really of reaching up is not hierarchical. It's about raising ambitions, raising our voice and raising the political um, will of what we are trying to achieve. This is a really important time, colleagues, in, in multilateral and national decision making. It's a window for us to really provide decision makers with a common vision, a common vocabulary, tools, ideas, uh, a picture of what's actually already happening. And so that can be reflected in the way that decisions are made. Because as Marcel mentioned, um, and David mentioned as well, that it's shockingly um, the, the idea that environment is missing from major decisions on how globalization is, sh globalization is shaping our world is, is really shockingly common. When you open first the, the, the GDC, the Global Digital Compact uh, Forum, um, you couldn't even say that the main theme of your submission was environment. So what Codes is doing here is really important in the sense of really providing that global vision of how environment and sustainability nexus is key to how our world is being shaped. But we're also looking at reaching out because really community building is the key to who we are. This is what defines codes. This is why codes has the voice that it does. This is why we've been able to uh, provide that we do in the fora that we do. So it's important to us to continue to build this society, to build, to keep being outward looking, to provide ways for you all to find synergies, to be able to enable each other, to be able to shake, showcase your work, to be able to tell people that there are ways to be able to achieve the vision that we've collectively defined in our action plan. So I'm just going to go through a few things that we've we've been up to. If you could go to the next slide, please. So quick reminder, um, CODES was mandated by the, the UN Technology Envoy to the Secretary General um, under the, the SG's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. So we have a, a clear plug into what's going on at the multilateral level, um, but it's been a, a process of co-creating what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to 
create um, that can actually have an impact. So we did together uh, through several roundtables, several iterative processes of getting a review, redrafting, drafting, presenting the report. Um, we did pre present together an action plan, which was really shaped around three systematic shifts uh, to enable alignment, have a common vision, uh, secondly, to mitigate the so negative social and environmental impacts that digitalization might have should it remain an undirected force. And thirdly, to accelerate innovation and to provide um, an enabling environment for this environment, an enabling conditions for digitalizations to really be that, that positive force for sustainability that it can be. Um, and if you look into the scientific literature on how you know, the studies on the possibilities of digitalizations and achieving and digitalization and achieving SDGs, uh, on the implementation of SDGs through digitalization, it is a, a very understudied, underimplemented, underutilized area. So we want to be able to change that. And those are the three key shifts that we base our work around. But then we need to concretize that, you know, providing a wide vision of things um, and categorizing that into three areas of work is a good start. But what we actually managed to do with you all was to say these are the nine key priority initiatives, areas of work that we want to be able to operationalize in the next two to three years. And that's where we are now um, in trying to really make real some of that vision in terms of impacts on the ground. Um, and what we've been doing also through, through this time is being contributing to key global political fora. Marcel has, pre has presented an important part of that, and I'll speak a little more about that later. And also concentrating on building the community, as I mentioned. Next slide, please. So here are just some numbers on how all of you have been participating with us. And this is really impressive because when we started, really, um, we were at times feeling like we were paddling really hard and not really getting anywhere because there's this kind of consultative um, exercise. It's really learning by doing. We had, a, we were pulled in several directions. There was a lot of times when we got some really angry messages on Spark Blue saying that there's no progress. There is, you know, there's too many opposing views and there is no consensus. And now we're really at a, a point where we've had, we have the action plan. We have more than 200 contributions, edits, <laughs> reviews, um, even down to changing words in the, in the draft. A uh, thousand people consulted from over a hundred countries. And this was really an experience um, that, that was worth its weight in gold because that action plan is now something of a reference document for this area of work. So congratulations to all of you for that. We've also been at several high level events throughout 2022. So if it was about digitalization, ICT, um, we were there, or if it was about environment, we were there as well. So we, we did present our work at the UN, UN Environment Assembly uh, in Nairobi. We were at Stockholm Plus 50, where we had our own side event, where we launched the action plan, um, and we had members of the community present their work. We also had members of the uh, of code speak at different different uh, events, side events, uh, panels. Um, uh, at the Stockholm Plus Fifty, we were at the Internet Governance Forum in Addis Ababa, uh, and we've also been at the Web Summit. Uh, we've been at the World Summit for um, well, Information Societies. So I practiced that one. <laughs> So we, this is the largest ICT mm -hmm. gathering in the world. Um, so we've been there raising your voice. We, the action plan has given us a, a common script to be able to take out into the world. And that's been really enabling. Uh, within the codes community, we've been building that community on Spark Blue. Paulina presented now the website. So that's really going to enable us further to be able to reach out to you all. We have over a thousand members and you represent 450 organizations, a lot of which are private, some are nonprofit. We have over 100 academia, uh, academic organizations out there, and of course, several UN entities. So if you're still not on Spark Blue, um, you should join in because, as mentioned, some of the discussions will continue there. That does provide a, a bit of an interactive platform that we're going to continue using. We also have a newsletter that goes out to over 15,000 subscribers. Uh, you can subscribe to it on Spark Blue as well. And we undertook a stakeholder mapping exercise to really map who the actors are, what are they doing, how do they lie in terms of our three shifts. Um, and this could ho help hopefully not, as, not only for us to reach out to people, understand what's going on out there, 
but to help you to see who else is working in, in your area, who, who you can align with, who's doing already work that might be of interest to you that you can use to catalyze your own work. Um, and you can do this by looking at an air table. You can put in your own initiatives there, or you can just look at the map um, visually to see what kind of work is going on in the three shifts area of the golf course. Um, we also have a digital for sustainability course. Uh, this is uh, built around the contents of the action plan, and this is to familiarize people with concepts such as digitalization, digital transformations, the three environmental crises. So really to try and bring people onto the same page when we start the discussion. Uh, this is something that has many partners, including the UN System Staff College, UNEP, GIZ, the EU codes, of course, and the Tech Envoys Office. It's free, it's open, you can sign up for it. You have to sign up for it once and you can do the courses there. Uh, it's about three to four hours per session, I think. Um, and finally, we have the digital discovery sessions, which are at the moment on Spark Blue, but will also be available on the, on the website. These are really interesting because we have some very interesting speakers representing work that individuals and organizations are doing in this area. Um, but also presenting really exciting ideas of what's possible and what's missing. So do join in for some of these sessions um, if you haven't already. Next slide, please. And when it comes to the nine initiatives, we've been working really on all nine of them. This has been, um, as you can imagine, a big area of collective work for us. It's been a, a real hard not, hard not to untie because there is, uh, there's so much interest and in how do you make sure that all of it really collates into something concrete, something that's impactful, that really moves the needle. So we've come up with, as Paulina mentioned, three ways in which individuals and organizations can engage. So you can be, either you can align or you can advocate, which means a lower level of responsibility, but you get to engage with the community. You can align, which is, you engage with the community, but you can also be part of a working group that tries to move forward one of the initiatives, or you can lead and you can, this is somewhere where, where there is still a chance to do a lot of work. So we're looking for people to co-lead key initiatives. Uh, if you are one of those people or organizations who are working in the areas of these nine priority initiatives, there is still time to be able to participate in that. There is progress on, on different levels on each of these initiatives. Um, we are in preliminary discussion with certain organizations who have expressed interests in some areas. In some areas that has gone forward, um, we send them an official letter of intent, which is very general, um, to continue to talk about how they can really move Code's vision, um, how their work can fit into to the broader uh, scope of our work. Um, and then once that, that commitment is submitted back to the code secretariat, the idea is that it would then be evaluated uh, for its merits. And then we, they would create a working group and really operationalize that work. And you could participate in the working group, even if you're not leading a core, uh, um, an initiative. So this is just to say that work is happening here. This is um, a vital area for us. And so please do get in touch if you would like to co-lead one of the, the core initiatives. Um, if one of my colleagues wants to come in here, if I've missed something, please do that. But otherwise, I'd hand over to Shivam. Thanks so much. I think this could be a micro moment, given the amount of work that Mega said we have done. So I think we could just done. <laughs> but that's excellent. I mean, Sorry. every time, yeah. No, no, this has been amazing. Thank you, Mega. I mean, this this just shows like the kind of effort that the entire team is putting behind in sharing the message, and taking the narrative forward. And it does mean a lot to us when we can engage with you in these meaningful ways. I think a couple of things that always stands out personally to me is, Mega was saying, we've been at multiple events and every time we have an event and I've personally spoken about the initiative, one thing that always stands out is the enormity or the inclusivity or the global undertaking that this is. Every time it's like, oh my goodness, you've got over a thousand different stakeholders from across the world that are all aligning around a common framework. That's a very powerful undertaking. And to me, that sort of inspires me personally, but also I think it's the message for all of us to take back that this is something that, that we can all get behind and, 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 and share because it is important. We all deeply care about better planetary and social outcomes, and this is a great sort of undertaking. Also on the course, um, the, so far we've only launched the introduction module. It's a four-part series. There's going to be three more modules that will be coming up, uh, each focused on climate, nature, and pollution. Uh, intersecting the role of tech 
to better each of these different facets of the environment. And so um, for those of you who, who have not yet, I highly encourage, it's very informative, very agile, very interactive course. I think you will enjoy it. Amazing. Um, thank you, Mega. Thank you for sharing the updates. Uh, moving on, like Mega was saying, so especially focus on the initiatives, we have made more progress in some than others, uh, even though we are trying to advance all of them. Um, and to share some of the advancements that we have made on particular ones, I would like to invite first Eliane. Hi, Eliane. Hi, hi. Good to be here, Shima. Hi. So, nice to see you too. Hi. <laughs> so it's, it's a pleasure to talk about uh, Impact Initiative 3, which is on education for digital sustainability. Uh, so yes, great. And so, as we know, it is crucial for all actors working at this inter intersection to be equipped with the capacity to leverage and design digital technologies in a safe and just manner in order to avoid adding to ongoing inequalities and environmental inefficiencies caused by the digital age. So our vision is for this impact initiative to build a decentralized framework that can increase this literacy and capacity at the intersection of digital and sustainability in a manner that is inclusive, leaves no one behind, and is sustainable. And by convening multi-stakeholder networks, we want to then implement and experiment these frameworks across different regions and build a model that can be adapted and scaled by other actors. So this impact initiative will help address some key challenges we're facing today. The need to bridge disconnected actors at the intersection of digital and sustainability to build and rebuild trust, the lack of diverse knowledge systems in our existing education programs, as well as meeting the growing demand for dis interdisciplinary skills across various sectors in order to address the sustainability crisis we face today. Next slide, please. So just some important updates in terms of where we are. So uh, I forgot to kind of introduce myself. So I'm the uh, director of the Canada Hub for Future Earth and the executive director for sustainability in the digital age. So I'm, my name is Eliane Yubali-Jero. So we're happy to announce that Future Earth and Sustainability in Digital Age have signed Dawn as co-leads for this impact initiative as it aligns well with our internal mission and goals. Within Canada, where we are based, we have partnered up with the MLA Carr University, All Purpose, and UNEP, and together we are identifying key stakeholders and building a framework to advance this impact initiative in Canada that highlights also Indigenous expertise. We find that really critical and as we move forward. We have also begun conversations with potential actors to explore opportunities for partnerships under this impact initiative in Africa. And finally, in May, Future Earth and Sustainability in the Digital Age will release a white paper to highlight a framework for an interdisciplinary graduate training program based on the learnings from our ongoing leadership and environmental and digital innovation for sustainability program here at Concordia University in Montreal that involves uh, all the major universities here in the city. So we're hoping that the framework will encourage and guide other actors to adapt and implement similar programs at city, municipal, regional, national levels. And so that at the intersection of digital innovation and sustainability, sustainable development, we're really going to be able to scale the capacity that we know is needed urgently all over the world to really help a just transition. Thank you. Back to you, Cheval. Wow. This is incredibly exciting. I mean, personally, also, because for me, education is such center in front of what we need to enable the systemic shifts that we are trying to. Um, Alian, could you maybe just quickly, in maybe less than a minute, share a little bit more about the program in terms of, so you're saying it's a program that is hoping to build capacity at all levels of government to help them better intersect tech and sustainability. Now, is that going to be sort of more like a workshop base or what's it, is there any sort of, do we have any ideas yet or it's still in the process? Is there any sort of? Okay, so so what we already have been work, uh, doing in here in Montreal in terms of the LEADS program is we've been working at the graduate students, so um, master's, PhD, and undergraduate and postdoctoral fellowships. So we see a need in government, but we also need, see a need in private sector and the nonprofit. So um, in 2021, we, uh, we undertook national dialogues across Canada, and we were looking at education at the interface of sustainability and digitalization. We looked at partnerships, uh, especially at the public-private sector partnership interface. And we also looked at uh, how do we uh, bring in two-wide seeing, which is really about Western science and indigenous ways of knowing. Really? So really 
how do we bring that to the transformation ahead? And so all of this work we've done is really about how do we create a framework so that all those stakeholders can be engaged and, and, and up the literacy. I mean, here in Montreal, where we're based, it's also one of the head office of the International Sustainability Standards Board. And so one of the things we know is everywhere around the world, there's going to be more and more um, need to disclose for climate, for nature, eventually for, for uh, biodiversity, for social and human capital eventually as well. And so what we know is this interface is going to be really critical. How do we ensure that small and medium enterprises are going to be able to take on these disclosure standards in ways that you know large companies can? How do governments create frameworks for them to say, yes, we're gonna support the International Sustainability Standards Board, and we're gonna support all our um, types of organizations to do so, and how do we as government help, you know, scale this literacy. So really, we, we see this as engaging all stakeholders. Wow, that's excellent. Thank you so much. There's a, there's a whole bunch of interest from, from the wider team on wanting to engage with you and the team on progressing this initiative. So I would encourage, please, if you're interested, first things to do is to please send out the engagement form. Uh, that's the first step. And then we will certainly share the contacts of Elaine and the team and, and, and an office we can get in touch and, and sort of bring you in into the work that we're undertaking. So thank you so much for your interest uh, for those of you who are in this particular initiative. And, and Elaine, thank you so very much. Um, to speak about another initiative where we're making some very good progress is uh, Rina, who's working on some really exciting work on progressing innovation. Um, Rina, if I could please invite you. Sure, thank you, Shivam. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Reina Otsuka. Uh, I'm the Digital Innovation Lead for Nature, Climate, and Chemicals and Waste Practice Areas at the United Nations Development Program. I'm very happy to be here and to report back on how we're advancing on Impact Initiative 7. Um, this one is about digital sustainability innovation. Um, we named it the hubs and accelerators, but it's starting to evolve in a little bit more of a network uh, kind of approach. Um, in the action plan, the vision that's written there is to launch a global network of connected and collaborative innovation hubs. Uh, however, while we were going through some of the consultation, uh, we noticed that uh, we do have a lot of uh, actors working already in, the, in innovation support. Uh, so we started to identify these gaps that, uh, first of all, there are a lot of support, but we do need to give more focus to, first of all, um, kind of direct the, the innovation toward digitalization for climate or nature uh, or to pollution issues. We also started to notice that the regional and national innovation, act, innovation actors are not always working together or they're not always complementing each other's gaps or, or technical skills. Uh, we also noticed that um, the, the regional innovation it, hubs generally tend to provide a lot of supply of innovation. So there's a lot of um, financing going into interesting companies. Uh, there's you know, potential unicorns that, that, we, that many of them are supporting. However, there is a little bit of a um, gap for, for um, actually connecting that to the demand or to, creating, to create demand in the countries that are in most need of these innovation. So we're talking about, uh, especially um, some countries in, in the Africa region, um, as well as the least developing countries. And so basically, um, and, and the final point is that we noticed that these green businesses or green digital innovation requires some kind of systemic change um, or some kind of behavior change. And so it's not as uh, simple as bringing a good innovation somewhere and then hoping that it will grow. Um, just like it might in, in a different uh, country. So we thought that we there is a need of unlocking this kind of a systemic change uh, with with a with a idea that it might have to go up to something at the policy level or at the regulation level, and it might not just be about uh, matchmaking consumers and uh, and innovators. So so far, uh, we were very lucky at the Internet Governance Forum. Um, there there was a representation from Rwanda. Who, who already expressed interest. So we started to um, think of a pilot project based on a particular need in Rwanda uh, with the Ministry of ICT. And uh, through this, uh, we were able to identify a draft of a concept note 
uh, and uh, we are also in conversation with a few uh, network partners that have already expressed interest in working together on this, um, including uh, Team Europe, uh, the Green Digital Team, uh, the, the D4D Hub, of course, we're trying to reach out to them more closely. Uh, and then there's a new coalition for SMEs and innovation that is uh, starting up, which is also expressing interest. Uh, we're also in conversation with UNICEF and WFP, which are UN agencies. Um, and this is a work in progress together with uh, UNEP, uh, between UNEP and UNDP. Uh, so next one, please. And so how we're trying to address this, um, and in the interest of time, I'm gonna try to be as short as possible. Uh, the, the, there's basically three parts. Uh, first is to align the national priorities and the private investment or market priorities, uh, and then the regional innovation support structures so that we can try to channel the investments into digital innovations that are focused on major sectors such as clean energy, waste management, or agro-food systems. The second part is to um, create a strategic demonstration or a pilot uh, at the local community level uh, so that it can be used as a coordination mechanism to find what are the systemic levers, what are the regulations and policy needs, and what are the things that need to be unlocked in order for such digital innovation to, to grow. Um, one very interesting example we heard from uh, the ICT chamber of Rwanda was, for example, there was a company that they brought uh, from, from Japan, actually, that had a cold, cold room. Uh, however, they it didn't fit into the market as it is, but by, by matchmaking the cold room with the local community uh, and, and a co-op, a farmer's co-op, uh, they were able to come up with ways that uh, a business model that is not just about setting up a cold chain, but actually uh, contributing to um, poultry and, and for creating new livelihoods for some, some farmers. And that, and that was done together with the local banks so that after this initial seed funding, uh, the, the community can potentially, and the business can potentially keep growing in a sustainable way uh, with a proper business model uh, at the local level. So we are trying to find such and design such kind of demonstrations uh, together with the network partners. And finally, and this is probably the most relevant to a lot of you on this call, is that we do want to take a network approach. So we do want to connect the local innovation support with global or regional um, ongoing innovation support providers. So we are looking for uh, network partners that are already active in innovation support. Uh, we're also looking for financiers, uh, if you're a venture capital or if you're willing to finance some of the scale up of these early solutions, we would love to talk with you. And of course, there's other currencies. Um, if you're willing to do a, be a mentor or you know, provide any kind of a technical support, uh, we will have a chance to call out for that through the codes community. So please do stay tuned for that as well. And hopefully we'll have a, a second round of consultation coming soon. Over, thank you so much. Wow, so much to unpack there, Rina, thank you. But, but I've, I've had the privilege of working with Rina closely on this initiative and it is rather very exciting because again, we are trying to really take a different view on how innovation ecosystems grow, particularly in, in capital staffed and data staffed markets. Um, so that's a very exciting undertaking. So please, if you are interested in, in collaborating with us or in getting a bit more in sync with what we're undertaking, please feel free to email Reno or myself and, and we'll be happy to, to chat and engage. But also more importantly, please fill out the engagement form because that's the first step to share your interest with us. Uh, we've got about four minutes left. Time has flown by for me. I hope it has for you as well. Um, Rina, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, just to close off in the last four minutes, um, I wanted to ask a, a couple of questions in closing. First, of course, a big thank you to all of you who joined us and who continue to support us as we undertake and progress this work. It, it is a big intention for us to engage with you on a more frequent basis so we can share these progress updates in a bit more frequent manner so that we can also invite feedback and, and help grow the community together. Um, and this is a bit of an ad hoc undertaking, but I would love to hear, I mean, any sentiments on how frequently do you think is a good time for us to engage with you uh, through these formats? Uh, quarterly, biannually, every month, uh, whatever, if you can just please quickly some, throw some numbers in the chat box. Uh, I would have loved to do a mentee, but the time restraints would be a bit difficult. So just quick sort of, Sentiments um, on what um, 
Well, so far, monthly is winning by a long margin. <laughs> like, daily. <laughs> yes. That would be excellent. I must say. Monthly I do, is tough, I, I must say. <laughs> That is the best. I do look forward to my calls with the team because they are quite exciting. But uh, I think daily we would overwhelm you. Uh, I think, I think, but monthly seems to be certainly something that is getting more and more exciting. Yeah, I think, Marcel, I don't know if you're seeing the same chat I'm seeing, but monthly seems to be um, getting quite popular. Yeah, I think then we should call out for uh, additional funds again <laughs> in the community <laughs> uh, to organize our work even better. Uh, I, mean, I would love to have a constant exchange indeed. I don't know if monthly really is possible for us as a small team. Of course. But it's good to know that there is appetite and, and we do appreciate you wanting really good, to yeah. hang out and engage with us a lot more in such frequent manner. I think we'll certainly take this back and see how do we organize ourselves in a more streamlined way, in a more cost-effective way? Um, at the moment, we are in the Shabam. process of... Yeah, David, go on. Yeah, I think just to say to colleagues that I, I think there will be different touch points uh, and different frequency per impact initiative. So some of those working groups might require monthly touch points when there's a lot of heavy work and some might you know, require just quarterly or, or something less frequent. So... I think going forward, it's going to be it's going to depend very much on where people want to engage, and which impact initiative they want to engage in, and then the code secretariat itself will have a series of regular meetings, probably more like quarterly, where we can sort of provide that higher level overview. So there'll be sort of those two different tracks: code secretariat, you know, quarterly meetings, and then I think there will be lots of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'll be a lot more frequent touch points. Yeah, that would really engage at a higher frequency in the different working groups. But also don't forget that you have all these other ways in which you can get information and connect with each other and provide us with feedback. So do sign on to Spark Blue. All we are saying is there's multiple ways to get engaged and all ways are welcome. Um, so more frequently, yes, as we progress the initiative, there'll be chances to get engaged there on a bit more frequent basis. I think we'll try and figure out a good rhythm for these webinars so we can disseminate information and progress at high levels. And then like Mega was saying, please go to SparkBlue and sign up and, and share your support through the engagement pathway forms as well. Uh, we are at time. Uh, so again, I want to thank you very much for joining, for taking the time, for engaging, for contributing, sharing. Uh, we really welcome all of that. Um, and uh, please feel free to share any thoughts or comments uh, with us after. Wish you a lovely day, night, um, morning, and uh, we'll chat soon, I'm sure. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.